Once again, this is the uh, crankshaft from the 1951 Royal Enfield Bullet Model G2. And I've been assembling the bottom end and fitting the main bearings and checking the shimming and so on. And um, I've decided that the uh, crank was spinning and it had a bit of a tight spot where it runs in the new uh, bronze bush on the timing side. And I don't want to go reaming that out and then creating space for oil to get past it again. I want to keep that as close a fit as possible. Uh, but it was spinning but binding in uh, one position a little. So I decided I'd get the crank out and have another go at it and see if I could improve on it. And I think I have. I've got this now. There's no tricks at all there. There's absolutely no run out there whatsoever on the timing side main shaft. And on the drive side, I've got two and a half thousandths of an inch. So I think that's a big improvement actually over the, um, the five or six on either one, rising and falling at the same time, cancelling each other out. I've now got a maximum overall of two, th two and a half thousandths of an inch there on that uh, drive side main shaft. And the other one's not moving at all. So I'm going to have another go now and I'm hoping that uh, the crank will spin more freely than it did before. And I'll be able to leave the bronze bush as it is and hopefully not ream it out at all if all goes to plan. So that's where we're at at the moment. Here we are with the trial assembly of the 1951 Royal Enfield Bullet 350 G2 bottom end. Uh, the bottom end is from the bike which I've had all sorts of fun and games with. We've seen the crank reassembled and tested between centres in the lathe and I had another go at that in my last clip where I actually got it to a point where we had no run out showing on uh, one main shaft and just two and a half thousandths of an inch on the other. So I, I decided that that really was probably as good as this old crank was going to get. It's had uh, a new time inside main shaft, of course, and a new big end floating bush. The crank pin was in very good order. I fitted a forged steel conrod to it instead of an alloy one. The alloy one, as we know, was in uh, rather a bad way. So uh, anyway, all that's been sorted out. At the moment, I've got the drive side main bearings in and the cork seal. Everything is there as it needs to be for the engine to run. But on the timing side, I've yet to fit the rollers and the cage in the uh, timing side roller bearing. So I've just got the main shaft is just supported in that bronze bush at the moment, a new one, which I obviously used to replace the very, very worn one that we had there before that was allowing all the oil to get in from the timing chest and into the crankcase. And if we have a look here, hopefully we'll see that we've got, let's get a bit more light there, barely any play or clearance. I've lightly honed it because when I spun it, owing to the two and a half thou run out that we have got on the timing side main shaft, from the drive side, there was a slight sort of pickup at two points when it was turning. It was just not seizing, but just grabbing a little. I couldn't turn the uh, crank via the drive side nut between finger and thumb, and I can do now. I literally, just eased the fit very, very lightly with some 600 grade wet and dry and a couple of rubs. And that did the trick. And now we're spinning freely. We've got no excess play between the timing side main shaft and the bush. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to fit the cage and the rollers to the timing side roller bearing inside the crankcase and give it another try. And if all's well, I'll be uh, applying jointing compound to the gasket faces. And clamping the crankcases together permanently ready to go back into the bike.
that's where we're at at the moment. So next up, we'll have another look at it when I've got the uh, rollers and the cage in that timing sight bearing, and if all's well, then the engine's going back together and going back in the bike. This is quite a good place to be on a Friday afternoon going into evening. This is the 1951 350 Royal Enfield Bullet G2 engine bottom end and it's now all rebuilt with uh, two new drive side main bearings and one time inside roller bearing and one time inside bush. Uh, the crank pin was in very good order. I made up a grub screw to replace the one that had been missing before. That was amazing. Um, it's also had a replacement conrod. We've got the forged steel conrod there with um, a new small end bush fitted that's all reamed and fits the gudgeon pin perfectly. So the whole bottom end should be good to go for a very long time now. And I'm just a couple of points to mention. Being an early one, this engine's got the tapered main shaft on the drive side. So the engine sprocket actually fits on the taper and tightens up to the taper. Rather than there being any spacers up against the main bearings and the tightening of this nut locating the crank, the crank actually has to be located and shimmed from inside. So uh, I've got all the end float under control by shimming on the inside and I've got it set so that there's absolutely no end float at all um, so it's actually not able to move from side to side at all and another thing I've done is bearing in mind that two and a half thousandths of an inch run out that I clocked on the time inside shaft between centres in the lathe yesterday I kept the fit of this bush as close as I could to the main shaft although I did have to hone it very slightly and I don't think the bush is quite perfectly concentric 100% to the rest of the main bearings but it's probably only a couple of thou out but anyway I've eased it I've honed it a little so that the uh, what very very slight run out in a time inside main shaft doesn't pick up in the bush and I'm going to spin the crank now and uh, we can see the end of the time inside main shaft and see the time inside main shaft spinning that bush there. I wanted to keep the fit as close as, as I possibly could because that is a good source for any wet sumping on these early engines because basically that is your oil seal so that needs to be as close a fit as you can get away with to the main shaft. The actual main shaft bearing on the time inside is in board of that and it's, um, it's a roller race which uh, the rollers run in a cage directly on the main shaft itself and then inside the hard outer race that's pressed into the crankcase from the inside. So that bronze bush is more of an oil seal than anything else and there's our old our old friend, the old time inside main shaft there and we can see that is the part of it that runs in the bush. This part here runs in the rollers. So overall I'm rather happy with the fit of everything there and uh, like I say going over top dead centre the crank won't actually roll over top dead centre, I wouldn't even say it's a tight spot, um, but with the shimming internally giving us no end float at all and the very close fit that I wanted in that bush, I'm not surprised that we've got that and I'm sure that once the engine starts up and warms up and the oil gets round and everything that'll be gone in no time. But I'm turning that with, um, I've got a socket on the end of the crank and I can turn it like that so it's not tight. So I'm happy with that and I think this is a good place to leave it now for the weekend and then next week I'll build the rest of it up and we'll get it back into the bike and uh, hopefully get it running again and this time hopefully it'll run nicely and the wet something will be a thing of the past of the past. That would be nice wouldn't it? 
after all this. I really don't think that there's anything else that can be done with it. I'm certainly going to have a good look at this area as well. Um, and if there's anything relating to any upgrades for seals for the magneto drive there, I'll be up for doing that. But I think finally, we could be on the home straight with this engine and uh, finally have the bike running, well, pretty much like a new one, I would hope. Fingers crossed. We'll find out next week, all being well.